Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to the second lecture in Chapter 5. In this lecture, I'm going to do another example which has complex eigenvalues, and that introduces a few interesting wrinkles that you may not have learned from your linear algebra course. <clears throat> so, here's the example we're going to look at. Two-dimensional example again. x dot equals ax. x is two-dimensional, where a is this matrix. So, we follow the same procedure that we did last time, as we're going to do in all of these linear examples. First, we compute the eigenvalues. And we do that in the usual way, and we find that the eigenvalues are minus 1 plus or minus 3i. In this course, our ODEs are going to be real. They're going to be defined on Rn in general. So the eigenvalues, if we have a complex eigenvalue, its complex conjugate partner is also an eigenvalue. And we see that in this case. Well, we have two eigenvalues. They're different. So what do we do next? Well, we're going to compute the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues. Okay, let's take a one of the eigenvalues. Which one? We're going to learn later that it doesn't matter okay. in, in a very particular sense. But let's take minus 1 minus 3i. Okay, we compute the eigen vector corresponding to that eigenvalue, and we get, it's going to be complex, 1, 3i. And that has a real and an imaginary part. Okay, now's the tricky part that comes in. What do we do? do we t what we're going to do to make the 2 to two by 2 transformation matrix T is in one column, we're going to take the real part of this eigenvector, and in the other column, we'll take the imaginary part, like this. Why do we do that? An interesting question, but just I'm just presenting you a technique, a computational technique that in two, for 2 by 2 systems is not hard to deal with. So t is diagonal in this particular case. So the inverse is pretty easy. You can check that in your head. And now we compute lambda, which is t inverse at. And what do we get? We get the real parts down the diagonal and the imaginary parts with a minus sign in the off diagonal. And that's exactly the canonical form for complex eigenvalues that I wrote down at the end of the last chapter. And so if we compute e to the lambda t, we get this form. e to the real part, which is minus 1, e to the minus t multiplying this 2 by 2 matrix where we have cosine of the imaginary part times t down the diagonal and sine of the imaginary part times t with a minus sign in the off diagonal. Now this is interesting because we can see immediately that as t goes to infinity, the 2 by 2 matrix is just going to be bounded. It's, this is a rotation matrix, and you computed the flow in an earlier chapter for such, a, such an example. Go back and revise that. But the entire matrix is going to go to zero as t goes to infinity. In this case, the origin is asymptotically stable. And we could compute e to the at, which it, if we put t and t inverse on either end, it's a big long expression. I'm not going to write it down again, but the picture we have for the phase portrait should be familiar. From this, we have trajectories rotating around the origin, but then decaying to zero as they rotate around at an exponential rate. Now you can check why I have the sense of counterclockwise in the rotation, uh, but I won't go into that at the moment. But this is 
the origin is asymptotically stable, and we see that that's governed by the real part of the eigenvalue, which is minus 1. In the first example, the eigenvalues are purely real, and they were both positive, and the origin was unstable. Okay, and this we call this a sink. We had a source and a sink. And in the next example, I will look at what happens when the eigenvalues are both real. They're different, but they have opposite signs. So, see you next time.